I'm joined now by Action Society's Ian Cameron. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, just to clear up, what is Action Society? Are you affiliated in any way with Action SA, the political party? Uh, Sally, thank you very much. No, we are a civil rights organization. Our main focus is actually gender-based violence. Um, we've camp been campaigning very hard uh, regarding the DNA backlog, for example, the Convicted Offender Amendment Bill. But in terms of today and what happened in Guguletu, we represent several families that have lost loved ones that were raped and murdered uh, because of gender-based violence. And those families live in and around Guguletu, Kailicha, and the rest of the Cape Flats, actually. And that's why we attended that meeting today. All right. The police minister said you provoked him and that um, you treated him like a garden boy. So suggesting really uh, that you were somewhat racist in the way you spoke to him. Now, can you talk to me about how this escalated? Because we've got the minister's response and we can hear you shouting in the background. Clearly something happened before that. So talk to me about how this got so heated. Yes, gladly. Um, uh, I think I, I, I'm not going to say much about the racism allegation that he makes because I wouldn't have been in Guguletu and rep um, representing many people like Nosipiwe James, Sipukazi Boy, etc. if I didn't care for all the different people in South Africa. So be that as it may, he can think what he wants about me. But let me share what I said that led to this big argument. So. It started off where Tele basically said that the constitution only allows for the South African police service to safeguard people and that the provincial government and metro police institutions in the Western Cape are trying to build parallel structures and interfering in police work. He also spoke down in a very derogatory way to some of the neighborhood watchers. Uh, that were in the room and said that CPFs are the only mandated bodies. And uh, I obviously kept quiet until I was the 13th speaker after he spoke, so I waited my turn, after which I stood up and I just said to him, look, Minister Tele, um, I want to just set a few things straight. Firstly, um, you are not quoting the Constitution correctly, and whilst you are using the Constitution, and making an opportunity to fight provincial politics, you are forgetting about the people being murdered and killed in and throughout Guguletu, Kailicha, etc. And I actually mentioned Nosipiwe James as an example that was killed in the beginning of May, where the police didn't do much. And it took us to go and find where he was in the Eastern Cape, actually, and have him arrested and bring him back to Kailicha, mm -hmm. where he could then appear in court. Nevertheless, I then said to him, look, I graciously invite you to come and patrol here in this community or other communities. We're not that involved in Guguletu, more so in Kailicha. Said to him, come and patrol there without your bodyguards and without your motorcade and in normal clothes and walk through the sewage that the brave women in that community walk through every night when they patrol because of the lack of police support they get. And I think Tele just didn't like that uh, I, I quoted facts because I then added that the police ratio uh, in the area is 642 people per police member and the prescribed average from the UN is 300 mm. per police member. So more than double the capacity is actually needed. So I have watched a number of these meetings and the police minister has been in the area quite a lot of late. And he's had in Bezos, in the Western Cape and other areas, had open meetings where the community has shouted and screamed and shared their anger, their fear and their frustration. Why do you think you got under his skin specifically? Well, I, I tried not to have an emotional discussion with him. I just stated facts. Um, I've got no... Uh, reason to attack him as a person, but mm -hmm. I also admit that I have made it very clear that Becky Tele is not a good police minister, and um, and I think it upset him that one, someone challenged him today. At one point, um, he said, I listened to you, now you listen to me. Were you heckling and shouting, shut up, at him while he was trying to talk? No, when, when he said his remark about being called a garden boy, I stood up and I said, I never said that. And I, I, I demand you to, to retract that statement. And then he said, shut up and sit down. And I said, you can shut up. I will not sit down and I will not be accused of something I didn't do. 
Um, and I will not make this a race or political debate. The point is 67 people are murdered in South Africa every day and he is fighting dirty politics. 150 women is raped every day in South Africa and he is fighting dirty politics. Do you think, and, and this is perhaps the issue that is, that is hard to talk about, um, there's, there's, a, there's a point at which possibly I'd like your input where the free for all of robust engagement on what is wrong in South Africa and the things that need to change, where that robust engagement ends and white South African sensitivity to our history of privilege must begin. Are you, do you think about those things? Do you think that that could have played a role? Um, and do you think that as a white South African, you need to edit yourself and be perhaps sensitive to how you might appear? Or do you not subscribe to that in any way? No, I, I went there today as a, as a citizen, as someone that really cares. I spend a lot of time with these families on ground level. Just last week, I was with the family of Sikukazi Boy. She was dismembered and burnt in a trolley bin. I didn't see any intervention plan from Taylor there or from the police. In fact, that man that killed her was out on bail after he beat her into hospital. So mm -hmm. honestly, I couldn't care less what race someone is. People are getting killed at alarming rates in South Africa, higher than the many war zones throughout the world. Mm. And we have a minister of police fighting dirty politics, and I'm not going to get involved in, in race issues when I see people being killed at the rate which they are. Ian, um, two quick questions. Are you going to be pressing charges? Were you roughed up by the police? They seem to be trying to engage with you to get you out. I'm not sure what happened afterwards. Uh, quick answer on that. And what do you think today's interaction actually achieved in terms of your ideals to try and bring attention to fighting crime? <laughs> So firstly, we will be meeting with our legal team tomorrow, discussing further action. We will definitely be taking certain steps, not only against Tele, but also against some of the thugs that he abused in uniform today to um, handle me the way that they did. Luckily, I was not injured. Um, but uh, but in, in terms of the rest and, and, and what we will do, or rather what we've achieved through today, I think we've just actually he's done us a favor to to show people his true colors once again he's not worth being called a, a police minister he's failed in his mandate and i really believe that his uh, that his performance agreement should be made public in fact as you're showing this clip i see one of his own police members laughing at him and i saw many of them laughing at him so he's an embarrassment not only to the police but to south africa in general all right. Well, thank you very much for chatting to us this evening. Action Society's Ian Cameron telling us from his perspective how things went down at that Google Ledger meeting. We have asked the police minister or his spokesperson to join us as well, but we haven't as yet got confirmation. Let's move now uh, to this.